Welcome back. We're here for episode two of Peak Degeneracy. So, what will our tactic for today be? Last time, we talked about tank spam. Today, we're doing the opposite. Air spam! So, there's a lot of nations that can do this very effectively, and you can do it at a lot of BRs, but the best, by far, is America. And so that's where pretty much all the footage today is going to come from. BR-5 American Air. So, what did we run for our air spam? Well, number one, the tried and true P-47 D-28. It is by far the best multi-role plane in the game, with 10 HVARs and a 500 pound bomb, plus like 10 50 cal machine guns. It's either 8 or 10, I think it's like 10. Uh, 8 50 cal machine guns. On top of that, turns alright, flies fast. It's all around a banger of a plane. With 10 HVARs, you get 5 launches, so in theory you can hit 5 different targets, plus you have a bomb. I generally prefer to use the bomb on tanks because it's just more reliable for killing tanks. But you can do it with the HVARs. You just need to get a good direct hit in the right place. But the HVARs absolutely demolish infantry. And you can do some really dirty stuff with this plane where you come in and you walk a barrage across where you think the enemies are. Uh, there were multiple times where I got like 15 or 20 kills in a pass where I would basically uh, start dropping them or I'd like wiggle my nose around while I was dropping them to spread them out. And so it's almost like an instantaneous artillery barrage that hits all at once. Of course, most of the time I prefer to fire one or two impulses of the rockets off, go out, come around, fire another one or two, go out, come around, fire another one. So, generally I do multiple passes with it. In addition to that, it functions very well at transitioning from striking the enemy to defending your airspace. If the other team's calling in bombers, you can make short work of them, but on top of that, on your way in, you can fire off your rockets from a little ways out, as long as you have a decent understanding of their drop, shoot down the enemy plane that's trying to come in and strafe, or at least get some shots on him so if he goes down you'll get an assist, and then pop up and around, shoot down any enemy planes that you see, and then finish your package. Now, if you wanted to be especially degenerate, you could just come in, drop all your ordnance, slam it into the ground, go next. I don't think it's that fun to do something like that, and that truly would be degenerate. I mean, it would be in the spirit of the playstyle, but I mean, there are some things that I just don't want to do. <laughs> like, I'm doing this to put myself in other people's shoes and see other ways of playing the game than what I normally do, and just freshen up the experience, and also because I kind of want to know what the most effective way is to build up points in this game. So let's get on with the rest of the lineup. Number two, I ran the A20G25. It's basically a cross between an attack plane and a medium bomber. In this case, in uh, Enlisted, it carries four 500 pound bombs. They drop in pairs of two, which I actually really dislike that. They they come from an internal bomb bay. There's no reason why you shouldn't have four individual 500 pound drops, but here we are. It also has a boatload of 50 cals in the nose, uh, like six of them. So you can deal pretty well with whatever you shoot at. It is a fat motherfucker though. It is a bit of a whale and it does not like to turn. So our next plane was the Bowfighter Mark 10. It's also a bit of a whale. It's a little bit less of a whale than the A-20. And instead of carrying bombs, it carries rockets and it carries eight RP-3s. 
On top of that, you get a combination of 7.7s and 20 mil cannons, so you can be very devastating. Also, you get a tail gunner. That might be nice, but who cares? So, that was our strike plane loadout. Now, you might think, from playing tanks, that because we ran three tanks, we're going to run three planes. And depending on how many slots you have, you might only want to run three planes. But this is peak degeneracy, not some basic amateur shit. And so in the spirit of peak degeneracy, we also ran three fighters. So, what are our fighters? Well, we have the AP-4C, the tried, the true, the fantastic Corsair. Arguably the best multi-role fighter in the game that fits in the fighter role. I'm of the opinion that it is the best. Feel free to disagree. I, I know that there's a strong argument for the fighter variant of the Fokker Wolf 190. I like rockets more than I like bombs. But I'll admit that is a very good plane. So, what are you getting here? Well, you're getting a plane that's fast, you're getting a plane that has 420 mils that hit like freight trains strapped to a 747, and you're getting 8 HVAR rockets. So, all of the tactics that were viable for the P-47 are viable for you. The only thing is, you're giving up one rocket launch, one bomb, and now you can turn a little bit better, and you can kill things in the air a whole lot faster. This is the plane to run if the enemy team is spamming air. And spam air they did in one of my games just today. It's a real shame I didn't record that game. I'm really kicking myself for not recording it while it was going on, but when I started the game I didn't know it was going to be my highest scoring game ever. I, I will include a screenshot from that game. Uh, of the scoreboard. It is absolutely absurd. I had no idea that you could get that many points that quickly in a game. But, here's the thing. If the other team spawns bombers, and you have something like the AP-4C, or any of the other planes that we've mentioned, that have lots of guns, or very big guns, well, the enemy team isn't calling in bombers that are going to kill your teammates, the enemy is ringing a dinner bell for you. So, moving on, we also had the P-51D5, very respectable multi-role fighter, carries two 500-pound bombs, excellent for precision deletion. If there's an enemy tank or there's a concentrated formation of enemy infantry, this is fantastic for dealing with it. On top of that, it has 650 cal machine guns, it's fast, it's relatively maneuverable, and it's pretty good at dealing with any air threats that you see. It doesn't have 20 mils, so the other plane's not just going to burst into flames and fall out of the sky the first time you shoot at it, but if you sit on target for a few seconds, it's going to burst into flames and fall out of the sky. So, I mean, are you really missing out? Probably not. It's also BR3, so if you wanted to run a lower lineup, in theory, this wouldn't be a bad start for that. Moving on to our final plane, and there were a number of other planes that we could have used here. The P-38s come to mind, for example. There's some uh, BR3 P-38s. But I went with the FP-5. The FP-5 gets 650 cal machine guns, it gets a drop tank, so basically napalm, and it gets four HVARs, which gives it the lightest load of everything here. Well, you could debate that the P-51 has a lighter load only having two 500-pound bombs. This has more drops. That's probably going to make a bigger bang. Two HVARs, or I guess it's eight, four HVARs, but two HVAR launches is going to be pretty devastating, and you do get a lot of area denial with the drop tank. Admittedly, I spawn this less than any of the other planes. Most of the time, if I 
was running through my planes, I would be able to spawn back into one of the attack planes. So, let's, let's talk tactics here, right? I mentioned what you can do with the P-47D-28. The thing is, because of the depth that you have, and because similar to the tanks, every time that you die, you can just wait 10 seconds and pull out the next plane. I think you should take every single fight you can against enemy planes, because if you kill them, they're worth a tremendous amount of points. They're by far the most valuable thing you can go after. Planes number one, tanks number two. And in order of, of plane value, enemy planes flown by players, number one, probably fighters, number one, attack planes, number two, and then bombers, number three. The thing is, the bombers, if you shoot down all five of them, are worth a ton of points. If you shoot down two of them, they're worth a normal kill. A normal uh, plane kill. If you shoot down three or four or five of them, then you're making even more. So, as long as you can get all of them, there's a lot of value there. But the thing is, they're not threatening to you. You can get a good amount of points by shooting down enemy fighters. And the other fighters that go up are going to be trying to kill you. So, they're priority number one. The attack planes are priority number two, because they can try to kill you, they're worth just as many points as the fighters, but, on top of that, if you kill them, you're protecting your teammates on the ground, and they, may, they might actually win the game. Also, your teammates are going to be really happy if there's nothing raining down on their heads, and there's tons of shit raining down on the enemy's heads. Finally, you go after the bombers, because if you take out the whole formation, ton of points, they're basically free, they don't really do a whole lot of damage, you can kind of avoid their guns. If they do clip you and they do too much damage, kill your soldier, get in the next plane. So, let's get into degen points. Number one, you are playing planes, so one point. Number two, <laughs> I, I, I know, it, it, okay, it's kind of like playing tanks, right? You're playing tanks, you get a point. You're playing planes, you get a point. It depends on what kind of plane you're playing. If you're playing the fighters, you actually probably only get half a point. Because, like, let's say you have three vehicle slots that you can fill. Now, personally, I would put in two of one type of plane and one of the other. Um, you never know when somebody is going to be using one of those slots, so you're going to have better chances of actually spawning into one of these planes if you diversify your lineup. That being said, you get more degen points if you're only playing attackers. That's just the way it is. You're just ruining somebody's day. There was there was a game that I had yesterday where I felt really bad because there was one guy on the other team whose name I kept seeing pop up, and he would get in a plane, I would shoot him down, he would be on the ground, and I'd see him get blown up by my ordnance. And I'm, I was sitting there like, oh my god, this guy must hate me, I must be ruining his day. Which, hey, maybe that's your thing. Maybe you just want to piss in somebody's cornflakes. And that is 100% up to you. But you get bonus degen points if that's you. So, this can honestly be one of the most effective ways of, of farming points in this game. It's probably the single most laid-back, low-effort way to get points in this game, even more so than than the tank spam. Like, it felt like with the tank spam that at a certain point, if you run into an enemy team that wants to kill you, yeah, your, your core, like, goal for the game was to spam tanks, but I mean, you want to get in a tank and you want to be a big, beefy, strong tank and you want to not die. Well, when you get into into a tank and you keep getting killed, I feel like it moves from you spawning tanks because that's your, your win condition or like your goal for the match to just hate spawning tanks and, and being like, I will outlast you. It doesn't matter how many tanks you kill, I'll bring another one, Rob! But with the planes, it's just so laid back. Like, half the games that you play Nobody spawns another plane to shoot at you. They just spawn, like, attackers, make one pass and smash into the ground and give you free points because you had one bullet hit them. And then, the other half of the games, there's some guy in the back of the map sitting on an AA gun who shot your tail off and you just, like, shrug. 
spawn next plane, hit him with a rocket. <laughs> it feels so dirty to do, but like I said earlier, up to this point in time, I have never had a game that I have gotten so many points in as the one that I played today. We were on Normandy. We actually lost the game. We got to the last objective. We had like 300 tickets going into the last objective and we just burnt out. And we blew through the first like two or three objectives very quickly. But I gotta say, whoever was calling in the bombers on the other team, their resilience to call in bombers on cooldown is absolutely insane. I so the first time the bombers came in, I shot down half of them, and then they dropped their bombs and I shot down the other half. Alright, well, you kind of got your strike off. Makes sense to call it in again. The second time, I shot down all of them, like, two and a half kilometers from the battlefield. The third time, I shot down all of them, like, two and a half kilometers from the battlefield, right? You'd think at that point that you would stop spawning bombers because you're not spawning them to do damage to the enemy team, you're spawning them to feed me points. But the thing is, this continued all game. So by the end of the game, between enemy fighters, enemy attack planes, the bombers that were called in, and the tanks on the ground, I had something like 32 vehicle kills. I have never, ever gotten that many vehicle kills in one game. It was absolutely insane. So... This is all to say that if what you're looking for is a quick grind, an easy grind, because to be honest, there's a little bit of skill to flying a plane, but at the end of the day, it's pretty low skill, and depending on how degenerate you want to be, like, you can just smash your plane into the ground over and over again, and, I mean, you do you, boo-boo. You're not really losing out by doing that. Ten seconds, you're in your next plane, you're flying again. So... <laughs> It's a very easy, very relaxed playstyle. It's pretty fucking degenerate, though. Like, to be the guy on the receiving... I, I've been on the ground before, because I, I know that there are people who all they play are planes in this game. I've been on the receiving end of this before, where, I was where I've been playing Germany or whatever, and there's just some dude who sits in a P-47 all game, and he just rotates between that and a couple other planes. Like... This is something that I've seen before, it's just this is my first time actually sitting down and doing it, and if I was time constrained, like if I was seriously strapped for time, I would only, like if I could only log in for like an hour and a half or two hours every other day, and I wanted to do an event in this game, this is it. This is definitely the way to do it. At least so far. We'll, we'll see about the other methods that we try out, but like... This is it, Chief. So, I told you about BR5 America. Let's look at some of your other options. So, let's start by looking at Low BR America, because Low BR America is honestly pretty cracked, too. And if you're like me, you have two different Dauntlesses that you can bring out, because we have the one from Old Tunisia and the one from Old Pacific. So, that's two planes with 1,000 pound bombs. That's already the start of a lineup right there. I think that if you don't have that, you're in a little bit more precarious of a situation. The Hurricane Mark II B Trop has, a, has two 250 pound bombs, so that goes on the lineup right there. The... Let's see, the P-38 probably goes on the lineup as well with the M8 rockets, but that's kind of where the lineup burns out here. Because there's not a whole lot else that brings a whole lot of air-to-ground firepower. So, in my opinion, you bring the two Dauntlesses, you bring the Hurricane Mark II B Trop, which is a fighter, and you bring the P-38G, which also is a fighter so you've got a two and two lineup right there so you should more or less be able to rotate through them you might throw an extra fighter on just in case in which case maybe you go p40e or you go fp3 they're not going to get the same kind of air to ground ordinance but they're going to deal with planes pretty well if we look at germany at high tier i actually think that they're another one of the very effective ones for this play style so obviously we bring the fokker wolf 190 d12 
and we bring the JU-188. So that's the start of your attack lineup. From there, you have a ton of choices. You could bring an ME-410 and have two 250 kilo bombs. You could bring an ME-410 and have Furfur Granat rockets. You could bring a BF-110. Any of them, really. The, the ones that have the Burfer Granats or the ones with the 250 kilo bombs. In fact, if you wanted to strictly play BR-3, so you have the chance of playing down, you could bring three BF-110s as your attack lineup. As far as fighters go, you're much more limited. Most of them don't carry air-to-ground weapons, but the Fokker Wolf 190A8 Anton, that's a good option right there. The G14 or the G10 or the G6 might be an option. The G6 at least carries 450 kilo bombs, so it might be effective against infantry, but all of those, and the K4 for that matter, are going to be effective against planes. It's just the G6 is the only one carrying bombs. You could take the G55. It's two 100 kilo bombs. It'll probably get the job done. If you look at low BR Germany, they actually have a very strong set of planes there. You can bring any combination of the Stukas, and there's like four Stukas that you can choose from. So, it really is pick your poison. They're all good, they all do things slightly different from one another, but that's the core of your attack line. You could alternatively bring the Potes and then bring two Stukas, and then as far as fighters go, you bring the IAR-81C, you bring the BF-109F2, and probably the F1. You can make an argument for the C202EC or for the Fokker Wolf 190. If you want something strictly to deal with other planes, the C202EC would probably be my choice, but most of the other fighters I mentioned offer you the flex roll. So, Germany actually might be the most well rounded at low BR and high BR, where you have a viable lineup for both. I think America has better planes at high BR than anybody else, but I think their low BR planes are probably worse for this kind of tactic than the Germans. As far as Japan goes, your lineups are very limited. You really only have one lineup, and you can bring the D4Y1, the Key 61 2 Altsu. If you've got the premium Key 61 or the premium 0, those two are options. The B5 N2, you can throw on there, and the D3 A1, so that gets you all of your attackers and one, two, or three fighters, depending on whether you've got one or both of the premiums. If you don't have the premiums, then the A6 M2 and the Tech Tree, and I think you just don't bring another plane. But, to be honest, Japan probably wouldn't be my first choice for spamming this. That being said... Their maps are pretty lacking in hard cover. It's rough terrain, but most of the buildings are very light, so it actually might work really well there. And the Key 61s, both of them bring a respectable bomb load and double up very well as fighters. Same with the Premium Zero. The bombs aren't phenomenal, but it does have napalm. And all of the attack planes for Japan are pretty good, just understand you only get one drop with them. It just is one very big drop most of the time for them. Moving on to the USSR, I think that they probably do better for this at low BR, but maybe I'm wrong. So I'm thinking at low BR, you bring the IL-2-1941, you bring the SU-282, or M-82, and you bring the SB2M as your attack lineup, and then in addition to that, you bring the P40E1, you bring the I-153, and then the last one is entirely up to you, but I would bring the Mark to be Hurricane. 
Now, the reason being, the Hurricane and the I-153 get rockets, and they're actually pretty effective. In fact, the I-153 is probably one of the most underrated planes in the Russian air tree. It is stupidly maneuverable, and it gets the RBS-82 rockets, so you can deal with infantry very well. You just kind of struggle against planes, because you only have Shikas machine, uh, machine guns. As far as the attack planes go, the IL-2-1941 is my go-to plane. It's awesome, I love it. You could play it in BR-5, and I have played it at BR-5, and it does respectably. The SU-2M82 and the SB-2M are kind of whatever, but they carry enough bombs to be dangerous. Playing up, the IL-10, the Boston, and the IL-2M Type 3 are probably my main choices, but the PE-3s are options and they'll be very effective. You could actually probably bring the PE-3s over the Boston, now that I think about it, Boston's probably not worth it. Definitely the IL-10 and the IL-2M. You could make an argument for the IL-237, I just haven't had the best experiences with it. As far as other planes go, the LA-7 gets 100 kilo bombs, so it's a take. And then the LA-5, because it also gets 50 kilo bombs. The last plane is entirely up to you. You could bring the AK-9T, but I don't know how great of an experience that will be for you. Probably the Yak-3, just for air superiority, but it's up to you. I think their low BR lineup probably is more effective though, just given the kind of environment that you see in Moscow. So that would be my go-to. So like I said last time, let me know down below what other degenerate suggestions you have for other options. I really enjoyed playing these planes, but I also so far think between the two that we've tried, this is by far the most degenerate. You do have the potential downside that if the enemy team isn't spawning in planes and they aren't spawning bombers and your team's not spotting things, that you might actually have very low point games. But at the same time, if you're familiar with the maps and you know the kind of routes and locations people hang out in, you could still kill lots of people on the ground. And in my experience, post-merge, people are always in planes. There, there are some matches that I run into where they're sparse, but even the, in the matches where they're sparse, there's usually people spawning in attack planes and just smashing them into the ground. And as long as you can touch them with a bullet, you're going to get the kill for it. So it's like free points just being thrown out there. So, as per usual, get out there, kick ass, take names, and win your games.
attack. We won. <laughs>